Oh. My god, that was bad. Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today I have a special treat for you guys. We're hopping into the world of Hogan's Alley. We have gang members and a surprise lady, an oddly sad-looking professor, and a happy cop. Those are the people we'll potentially be killing here today. Hogan's Alley, of course, is none other than Hulk Hogan, the Hulkster's Alley. He decided to set up a shooting range. Um, actually, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know who, who the hell Hogan is. Um, it's kind of interesting. They named the game Hogan's Alley. And, like, in the era when this came out, the old NES games, you know, like Super Mario Brothers, Mario was a character. So I think everyone thought Hogan's Alley, like, who's Hogan? And nobody really knew. Uh, nobody I knew knew. I actually had to look it up today. Uh, after years, after, like, what was it, 25, 30 years of not knowing? Turns out that there was some kind of special uh, police training range in uh, World War II... And it was called Hogan's Alley for some reason. I guess one of the, the dudes who ran it was named Hogan. And then three years after this game came out, it was such a, a wild success. I mean, I presume that the FBI opened up their own Hogan's Alley. Um, I like to think that a bunch of FBI agents were playing Hogan's Alley. Like, yo, this should be a thing. Like, you know, let's let's throw our money together and make this happen. So, obviously, this game influenced the FBI to start up their Hogan Hogan's Alley range. Whatever. For us, it is the Hulkster's range. Uh, and without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, give this a shot. So um, this is a this is an NES Zapper game. The fun thing I always thought about these Zapper games is that if you only have a Zapper plugged in, if you aim away from the TV and shoot, then you select on the menu, and if you shoot at the screen, then it actually starts. Kind of a cool way to do the menus, uh, so you don't need a controller. You can plug in a controller and move the controller around if you want, but you don't have to. Hey, stop stop that! I'm I'm getting ready to play here. All right. So there's three modes to Hogan's Alley. Let's go ahead and just try them all out here. So this is the this is the shooting range mode, and it is clearly like a shooting range. And the goal is to kill the bad guys and not shoot the happy cop or surprised lady. I like how in the world of Hogan's Alley, there's only three kinds of civilians. There's women, professors, and cops. Those are the only three real rungs of society. Yeah, you can get technical. You could say, well, there's things like cashier. Oops, <laughs> I shot the prof. I straight up shot him. Um, okay, pro tip: the shirtless man holding machine gun is a bad guy. I'll remember that in future. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess you could get technical, and you could say there's things like cashiers, and uh, you know, there's taxi drivers, Uber drivers, I guess these days, and stuff like that. But th those are all kind of like variants of either a cop or a professor. And then absolutely everything that women do, they're just women, right? Like, I mean, that's that's the mentality of Hogan's Alley here. There's three kinds of people in the world. I guess four, actually, if you consider that they're also bad guys. And actually, you know, when I think about it, there's three kinds of bad guys. So not only are there three kinds of civilians, uh, and that includes both genders, but there's also three kinds of bad guys. Um, there's, well, I mean, there's your low-level hench thug, then there's, like, your mid-level enforcer, and then you got your kingpin here, right? It's like, there's your kingpin on the, the right that I just shot. The guy who got me, that, I would say that's, like, a low-level enforcer. He's, like, a mini-boss. Uh, the guy on the right was, like, your godfather type character. This guy's a thug. So there we killed the thug, he was in the middle, and the godfather on the left there. Now, uh, Hogan's Alley here was one of the launch titles for the NES. And actually, it's pretty easy, I think, to spot the launch titles for the NES, because they're all in those, like, uh, they're all in those... Oops. What? I didn't shoot her! Oh, come on. Ah, oh, two misses for that. Not... I, I lose two points. Not only did you shoot a woman, you also missed a bad guy. Double fail. Um, I guess I should actually be aiming here. <laughs> aiming with the zapper is actually pretty fun. But anyway, you can kind of spot the NES launch titles, because they're in the, the black boxes. So if you look up, like, Super Mario Bros. 1, what its uh, cover looked like, it was sort of like a black box with, like, uh, Mario graphics on it. And, uh, oops, I, I, I meant to shoot the professor, but he went away too fast, and I got a sharpshooter bonus somehow. Uh, I'll take it. Um, 
Yeah, so it's kind of like a black box with graphics on the front. And actually, if you look at all the original launch titles, like they're all kind of like that. These like black boxes with like pixel art on the, the front. The reason they actually had the, the pixelated art and not sort of like painted cover art the way they did for Famicom games is because Nintendo was trying to show the American public what the graphics for the games actually looked like because Atari had given such a bad name to video games that people were really skeptical of games. I mean, the video game industry crashed 1983 in uh, you know, the U.S. and uh, North America did basically because of uh, Atari's really bad pra oh, damn it, practices. Ah, uh, cops. So the cop is dressed like the kingpin. They have similar colors. I think cops should wear red. Make it a lot easier for me to not blatantly shoot cops. Oh, what? I missed both. Okay, we, we might be uh, reaching our capacity here. Yeah, 10 misses. Game over. This is the only shooting range I know where the targets shoot back at you. Can I just say that? So, okay, Hogan's Alley A is just a warm-up. The real action is in the actual alley. Because this game is called Hogan's Alley because there's an alley. And this is an alley that's riddled with crime and scum and it's up to us to bring sweet justice to these streets of cardboard cutouts they live simple flat lives nobody deserves to live in fear not in my alley i don't know what's going on i don't know why all you criminals are in this alley but you're about to get a face full of the hulkster damn it okay well one guy got me the hulkster's a little slow on the draw occasionally it's okay though um <laughs> Gun shop. Wait, all the bad guys are just hanging out at a gun shop? Damn it. Missed again. These guys, I guess you gotta be like... Ah, oh, you suck. You gotta be fast on the draw for this. Okay, let's see what's in this alley. There was a, a miscellaneous apartment building. Then there was a gun shop. Then there's like a keep out construction uh, area, it seems. I'm like holding the gun with like two hands. Like the way like you see FBI agents like... Uh, on TV holding it. I don't know why it, it feels better to hold it with two hands. I'm like steadier. You know, not that you have to be like super precise with the zapper, but you gotta be pretty precise. It's uh, it's remarkably accurate technology for its time, I will say. Um, so I'm not really like a gun guy. Uh, you know, if I'm being honest with you guys, like I, I don't really own a gun. I have no interest in owning guns. I mean, I kind of think, I don't know, like guns are pretty dangerous things. I don't know if we should make them freely available to uh, the public. I don't understand there's a lot of responsible gun owners out there, but it's unfortunately kind of the thing where, like, if you have 10,000 responsible gun owners, but then one guy who wants to go shoot up a building, maybe, you know, maybe maybe that's too dangerous to have around. I don't know. I don't want to get into all that, obviously, you know. Um, but uh, I'm not really a gun guy, per se. Oh, so that's it. Now we're back to the beginning of the alley. Um, but I do... I uh, understand the appeal of shooting. I mean, like, I have always loved Zapper games. I have always loved, uh, you know, shooting and, and stuff like that and, and, and video games. Like, it's fun. Like, I, I get I get why some people, like, enjoy shooting guns. And I've been to a shooting range myself, right? Like, I, I, it's not like I've never, never gone. Um, and in fact, like, I remember when I was a kid, there were people who I knew who went to other high schools, and their high schools offered archery classes, and I thought that was so cool. If I could have, in fact, I still could. There's no reason why I couldn't now. Um, I would have loved to have learned archery. It seems like that would be like a really fun sport. Um, and it is essentially shooting. It's medieval guns, right? That's what bows and arrows are. So um, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, you know, if we lived in an ideal world where there was no, like no mental illness and stuff like that, and you didn't have to worry about people going postal, then whatever. People could own guns, and people go to shooting ranges and hunt and have fun, and wouldn't have to worry. But you know, it's yeah, it's just unfortunate we're not at that that point in society. Like uh, anyway, um, oh, there's a sad. Why is the professor so sad? By the way, why is the professor so sad? I wonder. Oh, I got a sharpshooter. I don't know what I did to get that. <laughs> Maybe the professor's being forced against his will to, like, come and stand in front of me. Oh, it's nighttime now in the alley. We've been shooting people so long, we just killed a professor. That night has fallen. I like how, oh, by the way, this is supposed to be some kind of police, like, uh, training, training field. And, uh, literally, we're not being trained how to 
um, how to, like, read anyone their rights or, like, investigate crimes or just being trained how to shoot people. If you're ever in a scenario where you're walking down an alley and criminals come out one at a time, take a moment to aim at you, and then kill you, this is what we want to train you for in Hogan's freaking alley. Oh, kill that. <laughs> Damn it. That guy totally got me. Ah, uh, no, no! Oh, he's doing so good! Oh, it's falling apart! It's falling apart. Oh, no! Oh, okay, that one, my hand was in the way. I didn't see that guy coming out. You're gonna have to, like, put your hand down so it's not covering the screen while you're playing. Kind of like how, uh, I guess, real um, gunplay works. Uh, but you know what would be cool, by the way? Speaking of shooting rangers... Oh, uh, did we die? Yeah, we died. Well, I got farther in that mode than, uh, than the other mode, so yippee! All right, uh, now on to the the uh, the money mode, trick shot baby. This is where we make our money in the circus, guys. This of course has the can from Smash Brothers fame. So if you uh, you, you kind of have to like juggle these cans in the air and try and get them to oh oh damn I missed one. Try and get them sort of uh, in into the uh, oh no no <laughs> damn it into the different uh, outlets here. Ugh. I was trying to get, I wanna get one 5,000, that's my goal. So anyway, this is like when you wanna impress your, pre your friends, you throw a bunch of cans in the air and start shooting them rapidly with your, uh, you know, your gun. As you do, as people are, are off, often do, oh my God, I'm doing so bad here. We might have to have a redo on this mode here. Should I just go for the 800s? 800 is better than nothing, but 1-5,000 could make it all better. Damn it, I didn't want to do that. I was, okay, I'm going to try and always get the last scan into the 5,000. But anyway, um, so I've often wondered if Nintendo is ever going to get into the VR space. Like, if Nintendo's ever going to have, like, the, you know, the Nintendo... Damn it, damn it! Di oh, God, that was pure luck. If Nintendo's going to have ever have the Nintendo... Um, the Nintendo VR Oculus Rift helmet thing. Because if they did, I think what would be cool is to totally remake this game. In, like, this game would be great as a VR game. So, like, I played around with an Oculus Rift a little bit. And let me tell you that um, some of the games make me nauseous, I will be honest. Some of the games, like the roller coaster ones, like, I, I legit like them, but I, I get sick. <laughs> it sucks. It actually really sucks. When I was a kid, I used to go on swings and playgrounds all the time. I'd spend my whole recess on a swing. Nowadays, if I go on a swing as an adult, like, I start to feel sick after, like, five minutes. It really sucks because I used to love swings. But uh, that's how it is. Roller coasters, the same way. I used to love them as a kid. Nowadays, there's a good chance uh, after going on a few, I'll, I'll feel quite ill. Which sucks because I used to, used to think it, you, like, laugh at people who, got, who actually got sick on roller coasters. Now it's me, you know. Fate is cruel. Um, but one kind of Oculus game that's really neat, by the way, uh, that I think would really work for Hogan's Alley is the shooters, you know? Um, I think there's one, what the hell is it called? Dead and Buried. It's like a Wild West kind of, like, shooter, kind of like this, only, um, well, you're not shooting cans. It's kind of like a shooting range, only you're shooting zombies. And so you're just kind of standing still, and they're all, like, in this uh, area in front of you. Kind of like when we're going through the alley. Only they're actual zombies that are kind of running around. And they will come up and attack you if you don't get them. So it's actually kind of spooky at the same time, because if you're not paying attention to your left, suddenly you start getting hit, and you look to your left, and it's like, Oh, no, there's a bunch of zombies right there! Oh, how did I miss them? Oh, my God. Man, why am I so bad at this mode? It's crazy. It's so, it's so much easier to miss in this mode, I find. Like, when I was shooting the dudes, I was doing way better. I feel like here, just kind of, like, casually watching me fail. Uh, but, yeah, like, imagine this remade into VR. Like, like Nintendo has never remade this game. I think there's, like, a Hogan Alley minigame or something in WarioWare. And they definitely threw the can in Smash Brothers. So it's like, they remember that this game exists. Nintendo's, like, teasing us. They're like, yeah, we know Hogan's Alley's a thing. Not like we're going to remake it. Boom, that's how you get points in the game, by the way. But I think they're just waiting. 
Because the day that Nintendo is like, yo, we're making an Oculus Rift, they're going to be like, in Hogan's Alley, bitches. And people are going to be like, yo, yeah, Hogan's Alley, that was a good game, wasn't it? Oh my god, get get it, get it, holy crap. Get, what What's happening? I think my gun just crapped out for a second there, my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I can only imagine what this looks like, because you guys can't see my gun and, like, how I'm aiming. So you're probably just looking there like, Jay, pull it together! And I'm like, I'm aiming at the cats, I swear! I don't know why it's, it's not going. I think, like, in my brain, I'm trying to aim for the bottom of the cans, because that's, like, where the little, like, ding goes when they get hit. Um, but I think... So the way the zapper works is when you pull the trigger, a white box appears. Um, around the object and if your light gun picks up that white then it knows you shot that thing and I if, if you pay attention whenever, whenever I pull the trigger and the screen flashes the white box appears Around the can not below the can so aiming below the can. I think it's screwing me over. I gotta like aim at the can Oh god everyone get in there. Okay 800s. I'll take it Maybe I should just stop messing around and just try and get as far as I can Okay, that's what we're gonna do when I inevitably fail in this, we're gonna say, forget about, forget about points. Why am I chasing the five Gs? Instead, what we should be uh, chasing is the highest round. Like we should just try and get like to the last level. I wanna see the boss of this level. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't help but go for the 5,000s. I'm like addicted to points. And also you could just keep shooting. Like, look at this. You could just, like this is how you, this, that's how you beat that level. Oh, shoot. <laughs> You're gonna get no points, but you're always gonna win. See, like, here, we'll, we'll do it again. Round eight? Pfft. Round eight's easy. Look at this. There you go. Just send them off into the atmosphere. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, everyone. Juggling cans into the stratosphere. Imagine if somebody really did throw up a can, and they pulled out a gun, and they would need a lot of bullets because you couldn't just have a pistol. Like, I probably went through, like, 50 bullets right there. So they'd have to have, like, a huge magazine, like, sticking out of, like, an AK-47 or something. And they would just, like, continually fire, launching the can further and further up into space. That's, like, some Robin Hood shit right there. Like, you know the old, in the uh, Robin Hood cartoon comics and stuff? He always goes to, like, some archery contest, and somebody gets a bullseye, and then he shoots an arrow that splits their arrow and gets an even better bullseye. Like, you would need that level of aim to continually shoot bullets at a can until it goes up into the sky. I would like to see a Mythbusters episode about that. Could you do- could- could you even do this? Could- is it possible to juggle cans in the air with bullets? That- that- that would be some impressive shit right there. I feel like I'm cursing a lot today. I don't know what it is. Just having the old NES zapper out is bringing out my grade, uh, grade four potty mouth, guys. Um, anyway. I don't know if this is entertaining you still watching me shooting cans, but I mean... But I mean, this is it, man. This is, this is Hogan's Alley. I feel like this would be a short episode today. Um, so, um, oh yeah, you know what? One other thing. One other thing that I, I just thought of, too, is, you know how I was saying, like, I wonder if Nintendo's ever going to get into VR space with an Oculus Rift of their own? So it's like, I think it's just a matter of time, first of all, because I think everyone's going to throw one of those things out eventually. But, um, Nintendo actually does have a VR Mario Kart system. I've seen this on Reddit, I think. It's crazy. Yeah, if you, if you Google, like, Mario VR Kart, um, you can find it. And basically, it's... This, this, uh, like, complete VR headset that you wear while you're in a cart, and the cart kind of, like, moves around as you play, so if you steer to the left, it leans left, if you steer to the right, it leans right, and then, like, it feels like you're in Mario Kart, and you can, like, reach your hand around, it's, like, tracking your hands, like, the Xbox, uh, Kinect, and you can, like, touch power-ups and, like, physically throw them with your hand. It looks crazy. In fact, actually, it looks like one of the most advanced VR systems I've ever seen. So, like, Nintendo, who doesn't even have an Oculus Rift or, like, a PlayStation Morpheus or whatever, they're not even, like, in the space. They're like, yeah, by the way, we're developing technology to blow you all out of the water, so there you go. Which is kind of, like, unusual, because normally, like, Nintendo's known for innovating, but not necessarily developing, like, cutting-edge tech in terms of like power they're more about sort of like niche uses which is kind of interesting if they ever did get into the vr space um what else is there to say here about hogan's alley i feel like i feel like despite my best attempts to uh come up with some fun stuff to talk about um like like what else is there to say here 
Did you guys own Hogan's Alley? Was this a game that you guys played? I think I mentioned before, but uh, I really like NES Zapper games because they're so unique. What's weird is, like, I like them because they're unique, but, like, I don't know. This sounds kind of kind of dumb, and you might be like, well, why do you bother collecting them? But, like, I don't necessarily think they're the funnest games. So it's like, I actually own uh, every official NES Zapper game that there is. I went out and spent a year or two uh, just slowly kind of collecting them when I saw them, trying to find good deals online and stuff like that. So I have all the Zapper games, um, and I think they're great. Like, I really like having them. Uh, it's really, like, a fun way to play video games, like, with your gun here. But at the same time, like, uh, it's not, like, none of them, I don't think, are my favorite NES games. It's kind of weird. I don't know. But I, I like it for the technology. I like it because it's, it's unique. Damn it. We missed the Mafia boss. But, yeah. I, I, uh, I don't know. I, I would like to see this game get remade. And, uh, and I think VR Space would be a really cool way to do it. I'm over the Wii modes. I, I don't know. I, I've I've talked about Wii modes before, but they're just not the same experience as uh, as like a zapper. Um, but uh, you know, playing uh, Dead and Buried on the Oculus Rift when I tried it that one time with the Oculus Move hand things. I mean, that really did feel like the next evolution to the NES zapper. So maybe the zapper will come back one day. Oh, you know, what would be really cool is the day that Nintendo gets into the VR space, they make a game called NES Zapper, and in the game, you are sitting on a couch in VR with a CRT TV in front of you, and you're holding an NES Zapper, and you shoot at the TV, and you play these games inside a VR game! Holy crap, I just made Nintendo's launch title for them. There you go, Nintendo, you're welcome. Go make a million dollars. And, uh, and I'll probably be one of the people who actually, one of the people who actually buys this game. Could you, oh, a game within a game. Actually, that's, that's, I should be fair. That's not entirely my idea. There was an old Kickstarter game that, uh, for the Oculus Rift, which I'm really disappointed never actually was successful. I, I funded it, but I, like, I pledged to it, but it didn't work out. But it was a, a horror game inside a horror game. So the premise is you put on your Oculus Rift helmet. Oh, we got a glitch there. We, we were such a good sharpshooter, we broke the Matrix brief, briefly. But you put on your Oculus Rift headset, and you were sitting on a couch in a living room at night, playing a game on a TV in front of you, and you were playing like a Silent Hill style game. And the way the game worked is that as you got further in the game that you were playing on the TV, you would start to kind of hear stuff coming from the halls behind you and stuff like that and you would like you know look to your left and you'd like see around the corner in the kitchen like shadows moving or like a door creaking and stuff so it's like you're playing a game on a couch in your in your living room it's like every gamer's nightmare you're at night it's alone by yourself and then the house is actually haunted oh what a, what an amazing idea for a game I'm, uh, I'm i'm sad all over again that that never got made um, I, f I even forget what it was called, but yeah, a game within a game that is, that is something that would be really cool. Um, man, I gotta get one of these VR things. Maybe these things exist. Maybe you guys are like, Jay, man, you're so behind the times. Games within games are like a whole subgenre, you know? Uh, maybe these exist, but either way, whatever. Even if I didn't invent it, uh, I independently came up with the idea after hearing about it on Kickstarter. So there you go. Uh, anyway, guys, um, I'm... I'm, uh, you know, oh. <laughs> I don't think I'd be a very good FBI agent, cop, or uh, WWF superstar based on my performance in this game. But uh, anyway, this has been Hogan's Alley. Um, did this game bring back some nostalgic memories for you guys? Is this a game that you guys played? Do you have any, like, fond memories of it? Uh, did you even own a zapper? Have you seen a zapper? Maybe you grew up after the NES and you've heard long tale of a zapper and you've often wanted to try it but the act of getting a zapper getting an nes getting a game where it works on and getting a crt just seems like such a hassle that you haven't tried it but maybe you're curious about it whatever the case may be feel free to leave me a comment down below say hello and talk to me about uh hogan's alley zappers or nes's i always love hearing from you guys and as always i hope i've made this a entertaining a journey for you an entertaining romp hope we've chatted about some fun stuff if i have feel free to uh like the video subscribe to the channel super sharpshooter i just missed my last shot what the heck <laughs> anyway feel free to uh like the video subscribe to the channel i will be back soon with uh, more videos and more games so until next time my friends stay frosty and uh what, what was hulk's Ho what was hulk hogan's uh saying what, what did he used to say
Oh man, he had like a catchphrase. Damn it, I'm totally m miffing this up. Okay, actually, he had multiple catchphrases. You better eat your vitamins and say your prayers. So let me ask you something, brother. And what you gonna do when the Hulkster runs wild on you? Um, I don't know which of those is most appropriate for signing off, but let's go with eat your vitamins and say your prayers. <laughs> so until next time, eat your vitamins, say your prayers, take care of yourselves, and peace.